was in University of Cincinnati, I remember I would take these long walks out in Burnett Woods, and I would just ponder and contemplate, I'd say, how do I get out of this this state that I seem to be in, and that's that's a version of what it was. It was like, it was like, well, the things that you you want out of life, you have every right to ask for. That's how the Holy Spirit started with me. I was like every right, because I was asking for love and intimacy, peace, freedom. I mean, I was just like rattle off as I would walk through the woods. I would ask all. <coughs> the things that I wanted from God and, and the universe, and I would just say them, and say them, and say them, and say them, and then I heard, you have every right to ask for those. They are your birthright. They are your inheritance. You, you are worth every one of those things that you've just stated. And I was a little bit like, and then it said, now let's look at move inward and see what it is that you believe will bring you that experience. And so I I would go take them one by one and I would say, okay, one at a time, uh, freedom. Freedom. What do I believe would give me freedom? I said, if I had lots of money, if I had uh, great mobility, if I could go anywhere in the world that I wanted to. Great mobility of the body, um, um, and I just rattled off all these different things, and those were part of the beginning of opening the trapdoors, because I was told I had every right to ask for it, and then Jesus started with the discourse of like, well, you've been going about it, the wrong way. And the discourse came, walking through the woods, was all these things that I was asking for in my life and praying for, I had defined the means to get them uh, using the body. And I was sure that the body was involved in some of those things, like freedom and peace and joy and love and happiness, and the whole discourse came in, no, I will have to take you there. You know, we're going there, but you're going to have to drop through these kind of trap doors of false beliefs. So whether you call them desires, or whether you call them beliefs, you know, you can start to realize that if you follow, if you really do follow them in, that the Holy Spirit and Jesus will dismantle all your beliefs about how to get that which you believe you don't already have. It's like turning it in on peeling the onion of the mind, all the layers of false beliefs of seeking in externals to find those states of mind. So it's quite, it's quite a, an inward journey, that's what I call metaphysical, beyond the physical. I really get you in there. So we're talking about desires, and we're talking about, there's all these levels with perception on the outside, and then you go into emotion, and then you go into thought, then you go into belief, and then desire, or I call it prayer, is the center dot or circle. And when, when you say, you know, I feel really good and whole when I go to bed and then I wake up and feel bad. Um, and I want to feel good all the time. It, the way the mind works is, is whatever you want, it is so. Uh, desire is that powerful, it's like your point of prayer. So anything that you truly desire, you experience. All, it goes, shoots right through the rings, and whatever that desire is, shoots out to all of perception. So, if you have alternating perceptions, like I go to bed and I feel whole, I feel whole, the world looks wonderful, all my friends are around me, I'm happy, I'm laughing, and I wake up and I feel bad, then what that is, is if you feel bad, the desire is is what's at the core of it all. And so the first step 
when you honestly want to open yourself to the grace of God, is to recognize, you must first recognize the power of your wanting. You must first recognize the power of your wanting. See, the ego minimalizes even that. I talked about how it minimalizes the power of the mind. It literally tries to make you mindless in the sense of, of thinking you're a body, you got a brain, and you know, and maybe a mind is part of your your makeup, but it's basically it's it's about pushing the the mind completely out of awareness. And so, you know, that's why anything that you experience that starts to show you the power of, of your mind and the power of your wanting is a good thing. Like I would show the movie The Secret sometimes in Course in Miracles groups or at gatherings or whatever and they and immediately after you show the movie people jump in and go, ah, oh, <laughs> that movie, that is so off metaphysically, I've never seen anything so off. And, uh, that, that. I mean, there's usually, in Course in Miracles circles, it's a lot of criticism. A lot of criticism of the movie The Secret. Andy raises his hand, and he's, <laughs> he's got two thumbs down for it. And what I say, said to people there is, I said, well, actually any kind of tool or device that begins to show you the power of thought, the power of desire is a helpful tool. That's how much the ego has pushed the power out of, of awareness. You know, they always, I think it's, it's Mary Williamson quote or Nelson Mandela, I think they attribute it to Nelson Mandela, but actually Marianne Williamson is the one that said it. It's not, you're not really afraid of, of Darkness. The darkness, you're afraid of your own power. I think that's something, maybe that's paraphrasing, but that's the essence of it. Actually, Marianne said that. And that's what I'm talking about when I, I say the first step. You know, you're asking a very sincere question. You know, it's like a prayer of the heart. Like, why is this so? Why can't I... Why can't I consistently experience this sense of lightness and wholeness? You know, that's the prayer of the heart, that's the question, a very sincere question. And the, that first step is going to be, you must recognize the power of the wanting. In other words, you know, we were just, uh, Noel was just talking about that, where the mind can say it's bad to desire, and it's bad to feel. You know what that does? That shuts off the awareness of the of your power, just by the the judgment and the criticism and the condemnation that it's bad. It's bad to desire. It's bad to feel. When the way that it's all designed, you know, there is no presence. God is not saying it's bad to desire or it's bad to feel. What it is is the mind is in this self criticism. It's like a judgment that literally just acts as like a denial and a repression mechanism that pushes the awareness of that power out of mind. 